Todd Litzow is back at the controls of USA 1. Carolina Crusher tries to work out the bugs in a new engine. Grave Digger adopts a different driving style. But can any of them catch the equalizer? Stay tuned. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas. Welcome to Tough Tracks. Today, the TNT Monster Truck Challenge takes you to Flint, Michigan, Auto City Speedway, for the superstars of monster truck racing in competition, including the awesome Grave Digger. You see him behind me getting ready for action today. The Grave Digger's had an up and down year. When he's been on top of his game, he's been tough to beat, but some breakage has cost him in the national point standings. And speaking of the devil, here's Dennis Anderson, ready to go into action tonight. Yeah, I just wanted to say a few words. You know, I, I know I've had a lot of breakage. It's been a rough season, but I'm fed up with it. I'm tired of it. We've got the truck 100%. I feel like tonight I'm going to go out there and I'm going to kick some butt. These guys are going to know that I'm here, and I'm going to win for the fans. I'm fed up with it now. There you hear it. One of the most popular guys in monster truck racing, Dennis Anderson. He says Grave Digger's ready. Let's go to Army Armstrong and find out who else is going to be ready tonight. Well, thanks, Scott. This week, we're going to bring you monster truck action from Flint, Michigan. And behind me, ladies and gentlemen, a sight that we have not seen this year, that being the winner's play from last week's event on the Buffalo Trimmer. John Kwasniewski, a lot of people said it was a fluke, was it? No, I mean, it wasn't a fluke. Uh, we've been chasing all the trucks this year. We've been falling behind a little bit. We had a couple of breakdowns, but we made some suspension changes, and we tuned the motor a little different now, and, and I think we got it. What kind of racing can we look for tonight? This is the last time we're going to be outdoors, the last time we really have a chance to get after these engines. What kind of action are we going to see in Flint, Michigan? All the trucks are going to be going all out. There's, there's no stopping it now because we've got a, the engine change for the indoors, and it's just all out. Well, we're going to look for some super, as he says, all-out monster truck racing from Flint, Michigan. Let's kick over to Chris Chapman and let her tell you about our pulling portion of today's show. Thanks, Army. Coming up a little later on in the show, we'll be off to Bowling Green, Ohio, where I'm sure many of you will recall that the National Tractor Pulling Championships are being held. This time, we're going to focus on super stock tractors, which are about as close to farm tractors as you can get in professional pulling. But the secret here is that as normal as these tractors is here on the outside, it's on the inside where you can find as many as four turbochargers on a single engine. Keep in mind that Indy drivers race with only one turbocharger. This is guaranteed to keep your interest. And it's all coming up right here on Tough Track. You can see the wind blowing. It's a cold night in Flint, Michigan, but it's going to provide for some red-hot action on an outstanding track in Flint, Michigan. Well, we're going to look at some qualifying round action with Carolina Crusher, USA 1, side-by-side side here. And they're just racing for time trials right now to put down their times to see where they draw in the bracket. But I'll tell you, the top four in qualifying are the top four in the points right now. Equalizer coming in with a 47-point lead over Carolina Crusher. Seven races left, including this evening's action. USA 1 sits third, Grave Digger fourth. Nightlife rounds out the top five. There's John Breen and the Mad Dog at number six. No problem moving up the ladder. John Moore now seventh. Awesome Kong, Clydesdale, Wild Hair rounding out the top ten. Well, let's get back and see some of the qualifying highlights before we go to first round competition. And there's the story of the year, Army Armstrong, the rookie. David Morris and the national points leader, Equalizer. Well, the Chevrolet-powered Equalizer has really come literally from out of nowhere. This time last year, the young man was not involved in the sport at all. Right now, he's definitely a player. He is the player, the national points leader. Third fastest qualifier today was the equalizer. Dennis Anderson's grave digger. We talked to him at the beginning. He does look good tonight. Second fastest in qualifying with a 7.92 shot. Now, these qualifying sessions, you've got to remember, they are important. They're more than just put it pairing what they do they give the quick man lane choice as the pairings come on the screen now usa one fast qualifier gets a bye run then nightlife will meet wild hair a ford chevy matchup the no problem ford against the clydesdale chevrolet equalizer takes on stumper then carolina crusher out against playing for keeps mopar magic the dodge takes on mad dog and rounding it out scott stevens and king crunch against last week's winner the silver flag holder the buffalo tremor and grave digger meets the jersey outlaw ford gary porter can you catch the equalizer we ask well, the way it is right now, if I'm going to win the points, I'm going to have to push the truck to the limit wherever I'm outdoors, indoors, or anywhere. I'm going to have to push the truck to the limit to try to beat Equalizer. Tough Tracks 
Twix and the TNT Monster Truck Challenge are brought to you by Twix. Life's too interesting for a snack that isn't. We'll be right back. Downtown Flint, Michigan. Now, we set our cameras out early in the day. Beautiful day in Flint. But when we got trackside to get the TNT Monster Truck Challenge underway, it got cold, it got windy, it got even a little rainy. But the superstars are ready to react to whatever they come out against tonight here in Flint, Michigan, to see who can come home the champion and take that silver flag. Rod Litzow is back in USA 1. The last couple of weeks, he's been out because of a hand injury. Steve Wilkie's been doing a great job driving the truck. But Rod's back, and we asked him about that hand injury. Well, what happened is when I was back at home, we had some time off and that. I own another company up there, and I smashed my hand up there, and it requires a little surgery on that, so it just pulled me out of two races. It wasn't nothing real serious, but we just figured we could, we took a chance in pulling me out for one race so I could be ready for the last few here. While Rod was talking about his injury, you saw his bye run. That puts him in the quarterfinal round. USA won fast qualifier, got the luxury of the bye. Now our first side-by-side -side elimination sends a new driver, John Breen, something for his brother Bob in the wild hair, far part of the screen. Closest to you, it's Dave Wysorek in the nightlight. When a Wysorek's in a truck that he's driven weekend after weekend after weekend, John Breen's driving a different truck. Even though he's a man that built it, the truck normally driven by his brother, you can see Wysorek's gonna go to the next round driving a familiar piece of equipment. Hey, kind of a crowd favorite it looks like too, Scott. Been in the top five all year. Very consistent truck out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Dave Wysorek's nightlife will meet USA One next round. Here they come at you on the replay. Well, I have a Wysorek now runs a supercharged engine. He has about 500 more horsepower. He initially gets the jump off the starting line and just holds it and actually lengthens it as they go down the track. So the victory goes to nightlife and Dave Wysorek now has to go up against USA One. There's the national point leader. We'll see him coming out against the Stomper. Marvin Smith out of Arnold, Missouri drives the Stomper against David Morris and the Equalizer. We talked with Marvin Smith a little earlier about 1989. It appears he's going to finish in the top 10 in the season points, but obviously is not a player for the national championship. So where's Marvin's head? Is he satisfied with the way 1989 has gone? Well, there is to be in the top 10, Army, but everybody knows me as I don't like to lose. I, I, I can take losing, but I don't like it. You know, I'd, I'd rather be in the top five. And uh, if there's anything I can do about it, I'll be in the top five or the top three. But, you know, top ten ain't bad. <laughs> Marvin Smith. Yeah. He hit it on the head. In this field of trucks, top ten, not bad at all. The stopper lines up. The very popular Chevrolet against the oh, National Point great. Leader. Scott, we got a transmission went away on the starting line. Equalizer going to ease it through into the next round. David Morris got to love this. Doesn't even have to push the truck. You know, once he saw Stopper wasn't with him, he took it easy on that last set of cars. So the equalizer easily into the second round as the Stopper has problems at the starting line. And unfortunately, in front of a good crowd, a lot of Chevrolet fans there in Flint, Michigan. A lot of Ford fans as well, but the Chevy fans see the Stopper on the loader from being pulled away. Hey, a lot of these Chevys started life in Flint, Michigan at the uh, Chevrolet plant just a few miles down the road from the racetrack. Our next matchup in this first round is going to bring out the guy most seriously chasing David Morris's equalizer at this point in the season. Carolina Crusher to meet that truck. That's playing for keeps. And Jesse Berge, a Michigan boy out of Wyoming, Michigan. And there's Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, been strong all year. Well, there's going to be a big difference here. We're going to talk it up right now to let you see what this sport's all about. The auto value truck of... of Bergie is naturally aspirated, runs a carbureted engine, okay? You notice how he leaves quick. On the other side, the Carolina Crusher supercharged engine, and that big supercharger plays an important role at the end of the track, and Bergie's having some trouble getting shut out. The blown alcohol engine with the victory over the naturally aspirated engine of Jesse Berge. Let's hear from Jesse right now. Well, Jesse, nothing to be ashamed of. Two hundredths of a second, you had the auto value Chevy doing everything it could. I don't feel bad for naturally aspirated motor against a blown alcohol motor. Now, when we get ready to go indoor, he's got to come and play by your games. That's got to tickle you to death. Yeah, that's what we've been working with all summer. Auto Value's been helping me. They're going to continue to help me. We've been gearing this thing up, like I told you earlier, to run indoors. I think we're ready for them. 